All right, welcome to today's Tech Talk Tuesday. And for today's topic, since us classic Mopar guys just love decoding VINs and fender tags, uh, I figured I would do a video on how to decode a VIN on your 1970 to 1974 Dodge Challengers and Plymouth Barracudas. Now, a lot of the information in this video does apply to your other uh, Mopars of the era, your A bodies like your darts and dusters, and your B bodies like your chargers, coronet, roadrunners, things of that nature. And so a lot of it is interchangeable between them, uh, but you're gonna end up with different uh, letters at the beginning for which body style they are, and later in the VIN number with what assembly plant the cars were built at. But overall, the general sequence is the same, and a, the position codes are the same across the board. It's just some of the numbers and letters are different. So we'll go ahead and dive into it. For starters, there are three locations on a Dodge Challenger or Plymouth Barracuda where the VIN is in its entirety. Uh, the first is going to be the most uh, easiest to find. It's going to be on the dash on the driver's side. Uh, you can see it right through the windshield and that's where the main uh, bin is on these cars. There's a secondary one on the driver's door. It's located on a sticker that's, uh, as soon as you open the door, you see it's right there. It's a decal. It has the, the entire bin listed there. And then the last place is on the fender tag in the engine compartment where all the option codes are listed as well. That tag has the complete VIN. Now there are a couple other locations on the car that have hidden partial VINs attached to them so that way uh, you can identify if the car has been stolen and VIN swapped on them and things like that. Uh, we're not going to get into those. Um, we're just going to go ahead and talk about how to decode a VIN on a Dodge Challenger and Plymouth Barracuda. So for starters, the very first digit on the VIN is going to determine whether it's a Barracuda or a Dodge Challenger. And so for Barracudas, that first digit is gonna be the letter B. And for a Dodge Challenger, no, it's not the letter C, it's actually the letter J. And so the second tat number on the VIN is gonna designate the price class of the car, whether it's a base model, uh, in the case of a Challenger, if it's an RT, or of a Barracuda, if it's a Cuda, or if it's an SE or a Grand Coupe. So for the base model, that second digit is gonna be an H, regardless if it's a Challenger or a Barracuda. And for the higher uh, performance models, your Cudas for the Barracuda line and your RT Challengers for the Challenger line, that second digit is gonna be an S. And then for your higher class, your premium class, is gonna be a P, which is gonna designate a Grand Coupe, or is gonna designate an SE Challenger. Now, with the higher class uh, for the Grand Coupe and the SE, that was your premium options that had like things like leather seats, overhead consoles, and uh, had a lot more luxury options associated with those cars, where your RT and your CUDA is your high performance model, and it's gonna have um, things like uh, more aggressive axle packages and higher horsepower engines and things like that. And um, your base models, of course, are typically for your 318s and your slant sixes. So from there, the next two digits, the third and fourth digit of the VIN, that designates basically the type of roof the car had. So if it's a 23, that's ba your basic coupe, like my Challenger is, it's the just the normal two-door hardtop. So if you wanted a convertible, that VIN uh, tag is gonna say a 27 for positions three and four. And then for your formal roof SE models with a small back window, that's gonna be a 29. So from there, going into the fifth VIN, this is one, um, the digit that most people are really, really interested in uh, because it designates which engine the car came with from the factory. So going through the lineup, the smallest displacement engine you could get in a Dodge Challenger Plymouth Barracuda was 198 cubic inch slant six. Now this is actually a pretty rare option on a uh, Barracuda or a Challenger. I've only seen a couple of them. Uh, in all my years involved in the community. Uh, typically you see the 225 slant, slant six, not the 198. But regardless, if it's a factory 198 car, that VIN uh, fifth digit is going to be the letter B. Now for the 225 slant six, the next one in the lineup, that one you're gonna get a, a code of a C for the fifth digit. Now going in there, that's the only uh, non-V8 options you could get for the Barracuda or the Challenger. So jumping into the V8s, the entry level was your 318 two barrel and that got a code of a letter G. 
So from there, you're getting into the more of the high performance. You got the 340, which is a great engine. And that's what I'm running in my Challenger now. Um, and the 344 barrel was designated with an H. Now for 1970 only, for the AAR CUDA model and the TA Challenger, those cars were equipped with a 346 pack engine. And so the four barrel carburetor was replaced with three two barrel Hollies. And that's what I've put in my car and uh, I love it. It's a great unique look. And for that car, and it was only the AAR and TA, that code for that engine, the 346 pack, was the letter J. And so it's a real dead giveaway on whether or not it's a factory AAR or TA car is based off that fifth digit on the VIN. Now from there, we're jumping into, for the next character, this letter was used for two different engines and it depended on which model year. So the, for a 383 two barrel, or in 1974, a 364 barrel, that uh, engine code would be a letter L. And it's a 383 two barrel, so it's not a high performance model, it's just the base model for 70 and 71. And then for 74, the 364 barrel was the high performance engine option that you could get that year. And so the L was used for both of those, but never in the same year. Now, from there, going into the 383 four barrel, which was a high performance engine offered in 70 and 71, that code is gonna be the letter N. Now, from there, now we're getting to the real big engines, and so we got the 440 Magnum, it came in two different variations, the four barrel and the 446 pack. And for the four barrel, that engine code is gonna be the letter U. And then for the 446 pack, that's gonna be a letter B. And then the last one of the entire lineup is the king of the hill, the uh, one and only elephant, the 426 Hemi. That code is the letter R. So you often see us Mopar guys going around looking for that R code in that fifth spot of the bin to determine if it was a real Hemi car. Um, it's just one of those things we always go and look for. See if you've got a Hemi car, is it an R code or not? And uh, so that's what you do for the engine code is the fifth digit. That's the entire lineup of them. And uh, for there, the sixth digit of the VIN determines what year of the car is made. So whether it's a zero, one, two, three, or four, is gonna determine whether it's 1970, 71, 72, 73, or 74. Now the next digit of the VIN, the seventh digit, that is the assembly plant which the cars were produced. Now with the E-body lineup, the Challengers and the Barracudas, they were built in one of two plants, either Hamtrak, Michigan, or Los Angeles, California. So if it was a Hamtrak Michigan plant built, uh, the seventh digit on that bin is going to be the letter B. And then if it was done in LA, it's gonna be a letter E. Now there are a bunch of other plants that Chrysler built cars at during this time frame, and those correspond with the other products that were built, whether it be like chargers or darts and things like that. Uh, and again, that's outside of the scope of this video. Um, maybe in the future I'll go ahead and add those as well. but. Those are the main characters for your VIN on your Dodge Challengers and Plymouth Barracudas. Now, the last set of digits on the VIN, that's the sequence of production. So that's gonna be just unique per whatever car you have and when it was built on the assembly line. And uh, so there's nothing um, that's gonna be re repetitive between those, it's just the sequence of when the car was built. So that's today's video, that's today's Tech Talk Tuesday. I hope you found this information useful and when you're out in the, at car shows in the future and you see classic Mopars and you go and check the VIN, now you're gonna be a little more educated on what you're looking at and whether or not that car came that way um, from the factory. So of course, if you like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, smash that like button for us for that YouTube algorithm, get our videos out there and more people to see them. And as always, if you wanna be kept up to date of all of my future uploads, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and also ring that notification bell as well so that way YouTube will keep notifying you of all the videos that I do in the future. And as always, I will see you guys at the next video.